uh, like uh, a big picture, I've got the dollar weakening, I've got the stock markets going higher, but I thought there could be a better chance for a correction. And that correction really proved very short and very brief. And what that tells me is investors are still buying stock market on shallow pullbacks. And the dollar is still being sold on very little bounces. And so that means to me that the underlying trend remains in place. And the key to it, I think, really is on the interest rate side. The U.S. economy is, we, we know the U.S. economy contracted sharply in Q2, but it looks like it's picked up again in Q3. And despite that, U.S. yields this week have fallen to new lows. And the real interest rate, so we take the nominal interest rate, adjust for inflation, and we're looking at minus 100 basis points on our 10-year bond. And so this has really uh, undermined the dollar. It, under, it helps lift the equity market because what else are people going to do with their savings? And I think it also helps other assets uh, like gold. When people buy gold ETFs, they're really not buying gold. They're buying a claim, a paper claim on gold. Slightly different. So that is to say, there's people who are buying the gold bullion and the silver bullion and putting it into safety deposit boxes or at a storage at a, at a storage facility at a bank. Those are the people who are really buying gold or silver. But what's going on, and these kind of articles point to it, but it's part of this critique of what's happened uh, during this COVID crisis. And that is that there's been a surge, it appears, in retail trading. Not only gold, but stocks, uh, cyber currencies, and foreign exchange, of course. And so uh, these stories, I think that how gold ETFs are driving the market or how uh, Robinhood accounts, uh, those uh, places, uh, an exchange, uh, a platform in the US where you can trade fractional shares, practically no, uh, no commission because they give that information to others like hedge funds to see what like the small people are doing. And so I, I, I tend to think this is like the professionals critiquing like the amateurs who are just getting involved in retail versus institutional. But I think what's driving this, though, the ultimate thing that why should retail be interested in gold? I think one simple reason, even if you don't have even if you're not a gold bug thinking that gold is always going to go up or have some kind of uh, like traditional preference for gold, say parts of Asia. But instead, just think that uh, sh what are short-term traders, what, what's their model? What's, what's the, how do they trade? Momentum. Gold is up 35% this year. Everybody and their sister wants a piece of the action. 35% with very, I mean, in the last several months, very little pullbacks. I want to say that gold might have been down a handful of sessions last month. 35% and what makes it attractive, it used to be, if you, know, if you wanted to buy gold, you had to forego some kind of yield stream from a bond or capital appreciation from stock. But because there's because of how low U.S. interest rates are, and around the world, there's like $16 trillion of negative yield, yielding bonds. Gold looks so much more attractive, as Western economics, that there's a supply and demand, and a low price for something should increase the demand, and a higher price should discourage the demand. But that's not really what happens. What's happening is that gold goes up, more people want to buy it. They don't want to like miss out on gold, like you say, a safe, a relatively uh, perceived to be safe haven that's appreciating by a third. And what a troubled year we've had, where even though I, I know that the you know S and P 500 is near its highs for the uh, year, and uh, some markets are actually turned positive for the year, but nothing has given the return like gold has that's accessible to investors and that gold ETF is a way to democratize. How, how is like a, how is a, my mom or my sister going to buy, buy gold? They can't just, you know, so they, take a, they take a few dollars and go into like buy a gold bar and then what, what happens when they want to sell it? Instead, the gold ETF makes the gold market accessible. It democratizes it. It makes gold accessible to more types of investors and smaller retail investors. And they, I think, are uh, two things. One is the momentum. They see it, sort of see it going up, and uh, they, want a, they want a piece of the action. And the other part is this broader story about what's ultimately driving 
not just their individual decision to jump aboard, but what's fueling not just a gold rally, but equity rally, the dollar decline, it's sort of like a, not a grand unified theory, but it's like a string that can, that like is sown in between these different different markets, is that pe- people who are, uh, I say, who uh, have gray hair, have lived through many gold rallies and then gold collapses. That's what's so, that's what's so fascinating about gold. It has these incredible rallies and then these like punishing sell-offs. So I think that, that's why I think that ultimately, the way people make money in the markets is not is not simply getting the right thing, but it's really managing it and knowing like uh, where this pendulum between fear and greed. How high can gold go? And I see like you know I had turned bullish on gold and it was around fourteen hundred dollars an ounce, and at the time my vision was for seventeen hundred dollars an ounce, and here we are at two thousand dollars, over two thousand dollars an ounce of gold, and I still I'm thinking well maybe there's a little bit more like punch in the bowl. So the greed factor, I think, not only for people like myself, but for others, yeah, we're, we're in levels in gold that we've never seen before. So how high it goes, it's hard to say.